Hello everyone, my name is Bren Antrim and I'm one of the reference librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to be doing a workshop on literature research. What is it? How do I get started? And we'll start off with a short video. Installation is As soon as it loads. Thank you, YouTube. We often hear that studying literature involves finding a deeper meaning to a text. When writing about literary works, we're expected to mentally dive below the surface in order to come back up with big ideas. But you may find yourself looking at the flat page of a book, wondering how deep it can really go. How do we reach those ideas that turn into great essays? Well, there are two crucial thinking steps that can lead us in the right direction, practicing insight and acknowledging complexity. Insight is the ability to arrive at an intuitive understanding of a big idea using only small clues to get there. If you're practicing insight, you'll be able to use observations about character behavior to figure out their true emotions and motivations. Pay attention to little things because they add up to what is really meaningful. For example, if you consider a character like Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, who openly declares his dislike for Miss Lizzie Bennet, you might at first assume he's just a mean guy. But using your powers of insight, you're noticing other smaller things, how Darcy's eyes linger on Lizzie's face and how he seems all flustered when she's around. Add to the mix your knowledge that Mr. Darcy is in a much higher social class than Lizzie, and your sense of insight should be telling you that there's something more here. In this case, it will tell you that Darcy's surface behavior is in conflict with his true feelings of attraction, because the difference in wealth between himself and Lizzie makes him feel that it will never work. Thinking about all those small clues gives us insight about some of the big abstract ideas within the novel that we can approach in an essay. Appearances versus reality, the power of wealth and social stratification, and the unpredictable nature of love and attraction. Look at that, deeper meaning. The second step to a sophisticated analysis is acknowledging complexity. Let's face it, in both life and literature, situations are complicated due to social forces like relationships, moral codes, personal desires, and power structures. This means that there are, at any given time, multiple factors that shape what is true. In order to acknowledge complexity in your writing, refrain from making broad generalizations about a text or establishing quick, simple judgments about a character. Explore each facet of your subject carefully and make sure to consider multiple influences on events. Explain the tension of multiple forces that create the story. For example, a basic analysis of Toni Morrison's Beloved, where the protagonist has killed her own child rather than allow her to grow up in slavery, might sound like this. Setha murdered her own daughter. This act was wrong and causes the ghost of the child to haunt her throughout the novel. These observations are simplistic. They don't acknowledge all the different forces that contribute to what the character has done. Try something like this instead. A culture of slavery disturbs the ability to determine what is morally right. Setha's past experiences with violence reinforce the fear she has for her child's fate and transform the murder into a protective act. As the novel progresses, Setha is haunted both by the angry spirit of her daughter and by the memories of everything else slavery took from her. Here, we see those influential forces at work, and we've shown off our ability to understand the complicated nature of the human experience, which again allows us to access those big ideas that reveal the deeper meaning of a story. Ideas in this case, like the parameters of maternal instinct, the consequences of injustice, and the question of whether or not ethics can even exist in a corrupted moral system. It's impossible to sit down and write an amazing essay about literature without first thinking about it. Before you hit the keys, go back to the text and fish out the small moments, the complicated moments in the story. Line them up in your mind, practice insight, acknowledge complexity, arrive at some big ideas. Before you know it, the deeper meaning will be close at hand. So that gives you a general idea of how to approach a piece of literature. But you are not alone in this quest to find meaning. Um, you might be asked to analyze fiction or nonfiction. So fiction could take the form of a drama, a play, um, which is stories in verse, um, usually made for theater. Um, and the conflict and the emotion are expressed um, on the page, as it were, 
through dialogue between the characters and action on the stage. It might be a fable, a fairy tale, or folklore. Um, these are narrations that demonstrate truths, um, sometimes using supernatural or magical characters, often passed down by word of mouth, um, and they have some sort of moral or meaning beneath them. It might be fantasy, stories with otherworldly settings or characters that invite you to step away from reality for a moment and find meaning sometimes mirrored to what is happening in the real world. It might be historical, a fictive, fictional story taking place in a historical setting. Please be careful and don't um, confuse that with actual history. Sometimes it's difficult to tell. It might be horror, in which case what's on the page um, makes you feel dread and also the same dread that the characters are feeling. Other types of fiction that you might be asked to analyze include humor, um, which is meant to entertain, and humor is often woven through many other genres. It might be mystery, where the story is dealing with some form of crime or hidden meanings. It might be um, mythology, which is legend or traditional narrative. Sometimes this can also include some historical context, characters or places, so again beware of that, that myth is not history and it's intended to reveal a connection um, between human nature and the world around based on symbolism. Um, it might be poetry. Poetry is chock full of symbolism and intended to create emotional responses. It might be realistic fiction, which is again a little difficult because sometimes it reads like a true story, but it's actually not. It might be science fiction, which is um, based on either science as it is now, as it might be, or as it could be. And it might be a short story, which is sort of a snapshot of a story that doesn't really include any subplots, it just has the main story, because it's short. You also might be asked to analyze nonfiction, and nonfiction comes in a variety of formats, um, but they tend to be broader. Um, you might be looking at the story of a person's life, either one they tell themselves or one that people tell about them. Autobiography is when they tell of their own story. Um, it might be an essay. You should be very familiar with essays by this point and have written quite a few of them. But it's a short composition that reflects the author's outlook or some point that they're trying to make. It might be narrative nonfiction. And this is um, where it gets a little cloudy between realistic fiction, historical fiction, and narrative nonfiction because they all read like um, they're factual information, but not all of them are. Um, and then it could be a speech, um, either to engage in debate or to um, present a perspective, to give information, etc. Okay. If you have questions about what you're looking at when you try to figure this out, um, talk to your instructor. And also, talk to the librarian if you need help finding criticism to help you support your thesis because we have different types of databases for different kinds of literature and you won't get everything in one database. So when you go to make these analyses, where do you find the information? The video talked about finding information from the source text, actually looking at the text of the work, thinking of your own interpretations and experiences, your insight, your understanding of the complexities of the writing and the story being told, and then you support that by literary criticism. And this is criticism that's written by experts in literature, philosophy, sociology, and other fields that pertain to the content being critiqued. So for example, if you're trying to do um, literary analysis of an autobiography of a politician, you might also want to look at history and political science criticism to see how their story matches up with the story other people tell. Now, literary criticism comes in a variety of different schools um, or types of criticism. And I've listed these in date order from oldest to newest. Um, the old ones are still really useful because development in these fields continue. And in fact, the more well-established fields have a very rich culture to draw on. So you will find more examples of those than you will the more current types. Um, moral criticism and dramatic construction comes to us from the Greeks. 
structuralism and semiotics, or the meaning of things, and meaning as created through structure, comes from the 1920s and continues. Semiotics is huge in cultural theory and communication studies, for example. Then we get into a variety of formalism, new criticism, new Aristotelian criticism from the 1930s. And these were taking earlier ideas and um, restructuring them or finding new meaning or new ways to bring meaning to them. Psychoanalytic and Jungian criticism came in the 1930s with the development of psychoanalysis as a field. Marxist criticism came along in the same time from the 1930s on and came out of um, socioeconomic disruption um, and new ways of looking at power structures in the world. Feminist criticism started um, in the 1960s and attempts to look at um, all of these, try to look at the world through a specific lens. A feminist criticism was the first time looking at literature through a female perspective, um, particularly examining power and who holds it. Reader response criticism came out about the same time, um, and it, for the first time, was much more intuitive, um, and this is where your own analysis and interpretation sort of really drew from. Post-structuralism and deconstruction, um, sort of creating chaos from order, as it were, started in the mid-60s. Critical race theory started in the 1970s, and this tries to take a look at the entire culture um, looking at the pieces of our history that are not necessarily looked at um, and should be. The same goes with gender and queer studies in the 1970s. And then new historical or new historicism and cultural studies started in the 1980s and that had more to do with um, differences between cultures and meaning as created in culture um, and looking at history in a different way again. You'll notice many of these critical race queer, um, and gender studies uh, feminist studies, cultural studies, new historicism, are trying to take a look at the way we explain the world and find all of the meanings or different meanings um, than are regularly presented um, in a sort of hierarchical, structural, patriarchal, white, middle class or upper class sort of way. So they're trying to take these um, sort of standard constructions and look at them differently, break them apart, and look at them from different angles. This continues on in post-colonial criticism, taking a look at um, countries that had been colonized by various other powers in the world, and how that affected cultures, and um, particularly cultures from within that particular country that was colonialized, um, and trying to take those parts out and see the truth of that culture. Um, and critical disability studies, again, taking it from a different angle, from a different perspective, from a different population that had been silenced before. So you will learn a lot more about these different types of literary criticism in the various classes that you take that use them. But the thing that you need to know about literary criticism is it is a tool. It is not the end product. So t sometimes your instructor might say, um, I want you to take this um, assignment and find a piece of um, feminist criticism or critical race theory. <coughs> well, you can't just go to the library and find, here's a piece of feminist criticism, because it is a tool that is applied to a text to find meaning. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to find a feminist interpretation or a critical race theory interpretation or a cultural studies interpretation of some piece of literature, some piece of writing. So if you have problems with that, again, talk to your instructor and talk to the librarian, because sometimes this can be very confusing when you first start trying to look. So how do you find these supporting resources? Um, on the library homepage, and we will be posting this so you can access it later, um, you can go directly into databases, and once you're in the databases, they're broken down by content, and there is a content area specifically for literature. And in that area, all of the databases that are specifically about literature will be listed at the top of the listing. And then the bottom of the listing will be databases that have some content that could be useful, but the database itself is not specifically about literature. And I'll show you this in a little bit because we're going to do three different database searches today. 
some of the databases that are specific to literature <coughs> excuse me, include literary sources. This is relatively broad. Drama Online, which is pretty specifically about um, plays, including surveys and reference works on everything from authors to um, actors to periods and genres. McGill on Literature and Authors, which is actually a relatively focused database. Literary Sources has about 130 or 1,000 or so entries, um, people. McGill only has 1,500. These are the ones who are most studied, and they cover several different genres, but again, not all. They cover long and short fiction, poetry, dramatists, and philosophers. Gleeditions um, is, a, again, a shorter but full um, edition of several different annotated pieces of literature. So it'll have the text and it'll have notes on the text along with it. And the Cambridge Companion Online is a series of books from Cambridge University Press. And these are electronic versions of those print volumes and they cover a wide, wide variety of survey level or um, freshman and sophomore level college information. Um, as you can see on everything from art to music to poetry to philosophy to religion to history. Okay. And then we come to the general databases, which are not specifically on literature, but do include good information about literature. And that includes Oxford Reference Online. This is actually um, from the Oxford University Publishers. And they are also having electronic editions of their books. And these are mainly things like dictionaries and encyclopedias. So relatively short essays or entries that give you factual information, definitional information, biographical information. JSTOR is all scholarly journals, <coughs> and it covers a wide variety of topics, including language and literature. And you can find a lot of good stuff. You won't find the most current stuff because journal publishers, in order to make sure that people will actually pay for their journals, and in order to pay the writers who write their journal articles, they don't allow us to put their articles up right away. There's something called an embargo, which means sometimes 12 months, sometimes 18 months after the articles are originally published in print, they are finally allowed to go into databases. That's why sometimes scholarly journal articles online will lag. Newspapers, you get them today. Scholarly journals, it may be a year, and there's a reason for that. Part of it goes into the difference in the types of information you find in a newspaper versus a journal, and that information will we cover much more in our um, general research workshop. But just know here, there is a difference between those two things, and that allows the newspaper databases to update every day, but there is a lag to get your journal articles. Um, current biography is exactly what it says on the list. Um, it is all biographies, including many from literary greats or people who have been written about if you're doing those biographies or those autobiographies or those narratives. <clears throat> and Communication and Mass Media Complete is a good um, database to find anything that has to do with um, any sort of mass communication. So that often includes adaptations of literary works and um, sometimes even profiles of various authors and people of importance that you could find useful in your research. So I'm going to do um, three database search demonstrations. Two of them are on databases that are specific to literature, McGill and Literature and Authors and Literary Sources, and the third, which is a general database, and I'm going to show you how to narrow it down to literature. The example that I'm going to use is um, Joy Harjo, she is the Poet Laureate of the United States, and this is her second term. She was uh, recently um, appointed for a second term. She is a member of the Muscogee Tribe, and she was appointed um, in 2019 for the first time. It was the first time that a Native American was um, appointed to the post of Poet Laureate in the history of the position. She's pretty amazing. So here's how you do those particular searches. Starting off in the library home or the school homepage, smc.edu, in order to get to the library, you mouse over student support, 
and click on Library between Counseling and Tutoring. Once you do that, <coughs> pardon me, you have a variety of options, and I'm going to point out a couple of them before we do the quick searches. The first one that I want to point out is Ask a Librarian. We have 24-7 research help for you. Um, if it's a time that the library would normally be open, SMC librarians are staffing this and will answer your questions. If it's a time when we would normally be closed, like oh, 11 p.m. on a Monday or any time on Sunday, you will still contact the librarian. It will just be a librarian um, who is from one of the other colleges or universities that is a member of the International Consortium to which Santa Monica College belongs. <coughs> so when you use Ask a Librarian, you will always talk to a college or university librarian. So heading into the databases, when you click on that, it allows you to search either everything, databases that are primarily ebooks, or by topic. And that's where we're going today, going into literature. <clears throat> the first search that we're going to use is literary sources. And if you have not logged on, um, you have to log in because these resources are only for currently enrolled students or people who work at Santa Monica College. And when you log in there, it will take you to the database. And from there you have some options. You also have some things that you can just explore that are kind of fun. <clears throat> but I'm going to start up here with Joy Harjo. And when I do that search, it gives me 248, just a little bit, 248 pieces of literature criticism. And within that, it gives me 72 biographies, either a biography of her or biographies of other authors that include her as some sort of a, an inspiration or a mentor, eight topic or work overviews, 191 reviews of work or news articles about her, 68 primary sources and literary works, which include the text of her work, as well as often notes on it, and 10 multimedia sources. For example, um, Ms. Harjo does uh, YouTube presentations. She is a, an entertainer and a presenter, and she does poetry slams, and she also does poetry and singing together. Um, so there may be interviews with her, there may be poetry readings that she did, there may be poetry slams she participated in, etc. Now down here, <clears throat> I could go to one of these things. So, for example, I know if I need to know about her work, I could go directly to her topic or work over guide or overviews. I could also look, um, I could filter this 248 by specific subjects, by things that are about her, by names of a specific work, by things that are by her, by the publication of the title, uh, by the publication title of the journal that the work is in, by the type of document, and I can also search within these results. So if I were looking for the title of her autobiography, Crazy Brave, I could search within for Crazy Brave. I could look for items by her. I could look for the name of the work. So this database actually offers you a lot of different ways to go in there. And as you sort through here, you notice some are in English, um, some are in Spanish and other languages. And it will tell you here, just to take a look at some, it'll tell you the title of the work, who wrote it, the title of the journal it's in and the volume and issue, when it was published, how long it is, and what type of information it is. So I could find critical essays, I could find a biography, etc. So if I click on this overview for this author, again it gives me all of the information that I need. It tells me about her. She does many, many, many things, and she has reached her wider audience and made the deepest impression beyond her immediate culture as a poet. And then it talks about her works, gives a little bit of history into it. It gives you examples of how to do source citations. 
Please be aware when you use citations created by a database that you may have to fix them after you copy and put them in your paper. So for example, if I use the MLA 8th edition, which it's currently showing, this is the incorrect font size and format. It's not double spaced, so I will have to fix it when I put it in my works cited, but I can do that. Up here at the top, it will give me options, citation, email it, download it, print it. So you have all of these options that you can do with it. So if you want to, you could send it to yourself. You could put it on your Google Drive. You could add it to your OneDrive so you can save it to the cloud. You can also email it to yourself. One caution, this email relies on the internal emailer on your device. So if you are sharing advice with other people, or if you were using somebody else's device, it may bring up their email instead of yours. So in that case, you'll probably want to save it to your Google Drive. Um, and this you have via Canvas. So if you're an enrolled student, you do have access to a Google, Google Drive on Canvas. So heading back to the library databases, that's one of the two library, data, library literature databases. The other one that I want to take a look at is McGill on Literature and Authors. <clears throat> now McGill is a much smaller database, but it goes much more in depth on the people that it does cover. So you may or may not find your author in this database, but if you do find them, you're going to find a lot of information on them. So if I use Joy Harjo here, and you'll notice this interface may look like a lot of the other databases that you've used, that's because they're published by EBSCO, so you can always tell which database it is that you're actually searching by looking up right above the search field, and it'll tell you which database you're in. Before you search it, you want to go down here and you want to give it a few limiters. So you might tell it, um, I only want author biographies, or I only want work analyses, or I only want topical overviews. If you have a specific title, you might give it the specific title of the work. I'm not going to do that because I want to show a broad example of how you can narrow down your search after you get everything to just get the things you want. Now when I search Joy Harjo, some things I want to show you on this screen. Over here on the left, it will allow you to apply limiters. Over here on the right, it allows you to chat with the librarian without leaving your search. Once you go into the middle, you'll notice that some of these are author biographies, author biography, author biography, and then the further down you go, work analysis, work analysis, work analysis. The author biographies are looking at the author through various lenses. So this is McGill's survey of American literature, so it's looking at her as an American writer of note. This is the critical survey of poetry, so it's looking specifically at her as a poet, the survey of short fiction, etc. As you head down into the work analyses, the work analysis looks at specific um, works that she's done, Northern Lights, The Flood, How We Became Human, The Woman Who Fell From the Sky. And it looks at these works, not the author, but the work through a specific lens. So this is looking specifically only at short story. This is looking at any works that came out in that year that were considered of great note. And when you click on one of these, it brings up that work. It tells you the um, title of the art of the essay, where the essay came from and who wrote it. It gives you a little bit of information about the specific author it's covering. It tells you what is covered in this essay. In this particular essay, it's talking about the theme of metamorphosis. And then it tells you some subject terms these are standardized terms that are given to these articles or essays by librarians who say this is specifically about these topics. And if you click on one of these, it will give you other articles in the database that are also on these topics. And then as you go down a little further, it tells you about the work. There's Ms. Arjo. This is particularly interesting for me because looking at her work as a poet, they extract pieces of her work and then they examine it closely, bit at a time. 
So if your author is in this database, you can get some very close reading and some very substantive information from this database. And at the end, it gives you other places you can look to find information on her. As we head back up to the top, it gives you some options. You can save it to your Google Drive again. I don't recommend adding it to a folder. Things fall out. You can print it, email it, save it, cite it. If you're going to cite it, it is alphabetical in, or, um, in alphabetical order by format, so you want to scroll down to MLA and again fix it before you stick it in your paper. If you want to email it to yourself, this one actually relies on an emailer within the database, so it doesn't matter whose device you're using. Um, if you're sharing a device, it will send it wherever you tell it to send it. I'm going to give it some sort of a topic just so I know what this is. I'm going to ask it to send me a robot's attempt at a citation. Please put this um, in your works cited and fix it before you turn it in. Don't send it in plain text format. It will strip out all of the formatting and, and leave you a load of junk. And send that off. And when you get it, or at least when the database has sent it, it will tell you so. And at that point, you have a couple of options. You can go back to your result list and find other information, or you can refine your search and add new terms to it. Now the third database that I'm going to show you is JSTOR. JSTOR is um, not a database that's specifically about literature, but it's a database that includes a lot of really good stuff on literature. So I scroll down to the general databases in this topic listing. I click on JSTOR. Now, I've already logged into the databases, so I do not have to log in again. So if you see something that says, log in, don't do it. <laughs> You're already logged in. If you weren't logged in, it would not load the database, and you would not see the search field. So I am going to look for Joy Harjo here and spell it right. <clears throat> and then. I'm going to tell the database what to look for before I tell it to go look. I am looking for articles. I am not necessarily looking for book reviews or essays out of books, although I might be. I'm not looking for research reports. They don't really do that on literature. And I never want miscellaneous because it's things like back matter and journals and books. I want it to be in English because I need something I can read and so can my teacher. I'm going to leave the publication date wide open. Um, because I don't know how far back um, her literary criticism may go. And that's enough. So at that point, I can search. I've told the database who I want it to search for, and I've given it some limits. And I get 158 articles. Now, when I take a look at this, there may just be like, oh my gosh, this is so much. Um, I, I want to look for something that has to do specifically about her poetry. So I can search within the results just for poetry. And they all say, she's a poet, it's all going to be poetry. So I might add to that, if it's going to let me, Woman Who Fell From the Sky. Okay, this looks to me like this is not working. So if your search within results is not working, you can go up to your original search and follow the format it gives you. So I'm going to say, and, it doesn't have to be in capitals, but this allows me to see it better. Parentheses, poetry, and parentheses. And I search it again. Wow, it really opened that up a lot because now it's giving me book chapters as well as journals and it's giving me information on all of these topics. And I want to show you these for just a second because I want to show more. Notice that it's giving things like anthropology and cultural studies and economics. I want language and literature, but more specifically, I want information on Native Americans. So that cuts it down. It leaves it so that it's about Joy Harjo. It's in English. It's about poetry. 
but it's specifically about her cultural heritage. Now, when I find one that I like, ooh, this one looks kind of interesting. Um, I have some options. I can download it and read it later. I can save it to the cloud. I can cite it. Again, fix it before you put it in your paper. If I click on the title, unlike every other database, JSTOR <coughs> gives you your article page at a time. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have to like arrow through every individual page. So at that point, if I read through it and I decide, ooh, this looks really kind of interesting, I want to read more of it, I can download it from here, save it, or share it. If I decide that I want to share it, I can email it. Again, this relies on the internal emailer of the device you're using. So if you're sharing or using someone else's device, this may not be your email. What I would recommend is downloading it if you can. And then if you want to cite it over here on the left-hand side, copy, paste, fix. When you're done with this particular article, you can go back to your results, and you can narrow it down. You can apply different subjects. You can look in specific date ranges. Maybe I only went from 1995 to 2005 or only went from 10, 2010 to 2020. And if you want to search within the results, if this does not work, you can add it up here and see what you get. So those are the three different um, database searches that we're going to take a look at today. <clears throat> Some of the things that I would like you to keep in mind, um, ask a librarian if you need help while you are searching. We are open 24-7 in our reference chat. I recommend you use chat over email <coughs> because it can take us a while to get to email. If you send us email on a Saturday evening, we won't even see it until Monday morning. But if you use the chat, you'll get help right there in the database without having to leave it. Another thing is many of your teachers may give you extra credit for having watched this workshop. Um, we can't, of course, give signatures right now because we're here and you're there. So we have a code word instead. And the code word for this workshop is Sunrise. If you tell your teacher the name of this database, my name, which is Bren Antrim, and Sunrise, we may get credit for this. It's an extra credit. <clears throat> Keep in mind you are watching this from an archived video, so you can't, of course, ask questions live. But if you are going through it, you can also ask questions via Ask a Chat or Ask a Librarian in the chat about this presentation. And the last thing that I'm going to show you before I um, finish up is we have guides to help you with this. We have um, videos that I've created on the Literary Resources database. This is from before the website redesign, but the um, search itself remains useful. Miguel on Literature and JSTOR. We also have a library guide, and this library guide is useful um, <clears throat> in any English class or literature class that you're taking. It talks a little bit about how to avoid plagiarism, how to choose a topic, how to write a research paper. It talks more specifically on finding and using articles and books and literature. It talks about the MLA style how to create a hanging indent and giving sample citations. And then it has other resources for you to, what, to use as well. And these links are the same as over here, just giving you another option in case one of these links breaks. And then down below, once again, we have Ask a Library and Chat. We have the search that you can search the entire database um, of the library for, which includes all of our ebooks. And then you have a link to Opposing Viewpoints in Context. Um, which if you're in a social science um, or an English 1 class and you have to do um, a topic that is on a social issue is a good place to begin. So thank you for joining me for this particular presentation. Um, I hope that it was useful for you and that you find it of use as you go forward in your research. My name is Brent Antrim. This is the Literature Research Workshop and the code word is Sunrise. Good luck on your research and be well.